and, mm -hmm. and and that and and then to understand which judgments those are, we have to go back to the previous yeah, verses. There, and I think we need to. Let me just close this idea with one more thought. Uh, Joseph Smith said on one occasion, Christ says, "No man knoweth the day or the hour when the Son of Man cometh." Did Christ speak this in a general principle throughout all generations? Oh no. He spoke it in the present tense. No man that was then living upon the footstool of, the, uh, footstool of God knew the day or the hour. But he did not say that there was no man throughout all the generations that should not know the day or the hour. No, for this would be in flat contradiction with other scriptures. For the prophet says that God will do nothing, but he will reveal his, ser his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Consequently, if it is not made known to the prophets, it will not come to pass. So again, Let's keep our eye on the prophet and not to not with those who figured out some kind of wonderful scheme of understanding Daniel. Well, I remember as a boy hearing President Harold B. Lee in general priesthood meeting, at least I think it was general priesthood meeting, telling us not to go to the sensational literature. Let's see, let's review the sure word of the Lord, I think as he put it. And then he gave us some sections in the Doctrine and Covenants and J.S. Uh, Joseph Smith Matthew to look at. Yeah, the very sections that we've been referring to. I was October 1972. He talked about avoiding loose writings, as he called them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we do need to be careful. Well, let's take a look then. Oh, excuse me, Michael. Matches that perfectly. Whoso treasureth up my word shall not be deceived. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. we have to oh, turn. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, stay with the text. Stay with what the Lord has revealed. Watch his prophet and we're going to be okay. Well, let's go back over then and take a look at some of the events that are going to happen. We've talked about the fact that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He also talks about the fact that there will be the gathering of his church. That there's going to be a tremendous end gathering. And what, a, and what an interesting analogy. And it's a rather bizarre analogy yeah. if you think about it in verse 20. Essentially, when you when you see the buzzards, you know there's a dead body, and you read that and you say, "Well, that's nice to know." <laughs> well, in other words, a sure sign of a dead body it, uh, is a buzzard. A sure sign that the second coming of the Lord is nigh at hand is what we would call an intensified gathering. Mm -hmm. the, the work of gathering is well underway. Yep. Then he talks about three events that are going to happen again. Joseph, would you read these for us, starting with verse 30 and going through 32? Okay, here we have the <clears throat> classic illustration of the big picture of the again doctrine, and with each of the verses beginning and again. And again, because iniquity shall abound, the love of men shall wax cold, but he that shall not be overcome, the same shall be saved. And again, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, or the destruction of the wicked. And again shall the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet be fulfilled. So here we see then that certain events are going to be repeated. And therefore, we can anticipate everything else that's going to come down the line after that uh, particular or after these particular events have gone their course. Again, I am interested that because iniquity shall abound, love will wax cold. Are we seeing that today? I am just so impressed with what we're seeing. Uh, abortion, you know, a mother's love for a child, it's waxing cold. Men abandoning their families, men refusing to take the responsibility of fatherhood. Uh, all of these things we see coming. And again, of course, the thrilling part, it's not all black. The gospel is preached in all the world. Sometimes my students ask me, when do you think the second coming is? Ah, oh, come on, share it. You know, you're a BYU professor. You've got to be in on the know. And I say, well, get a map of the world. And on that map, use different colored pencils and pencil in every major language group. And when we open up a mission there and start teaching at one of our mission training centers, put a pin in. And when you put the last pin in, you better have repented. <laughs> because, you know, the gospel is going to be preached in all the world. Yeah. So on. Well, Richard, there's a number of things that are interesting in this text. If we're going to say, and again, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. It implies it must have once been uh, our, preached into all the world. Yeah, uh, there must have been a great deal more preaching uh, before than we have ever really dared to uh, suppose. Have well, and, and wouldn't some Christian traditions uh, suggest that, that, that certain of the Twelve even made their way into pretty foreign countries? Well, even into the Orient. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Uh, one of the other things that's interesting about this verse, you remember when Joseph gave his uh, discourse and he took uh, the German translation and spoke from it and uh, gave uh, his translation of it as he spoke. Uh, in rendering this verse, he rendered it uh, in this manner. He said, And it shall preach be the gospel of the kingdom in the whole world to a witness over all people. And then will the end come. Yeah, he went on. I, I turned to the same thing. The Savior said, When these tribulations should take place, it, the gospel, should be committed to a man who should be a witness over the whole world, which changes the meaning. I mean, there's no question it but does. that the Savior intends that, yes, one of the signs is the gospel will go to all the like world. Like the single greatest sign, the gospel yeah. will go to all the world. But here, the intimation, and, and, and I think the prophet uh, makes that clear in that uh, discourse that he gave, was uh, his own role as uh, the great dispensation head to whom the gospel would be restored so that it could go well, to all the nations of the world. Not unlike uh, in the Book of Mormon in 3 Nephi 21, what is, the, what is one of the great signs of the times? It is the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. You may know that um, the work of the Father is well underway when you see the Book of Mormon come forth. In this case, you'll know it's well underway and that we're reaching toward the end of time when God raises up a Joseph Smith to preside over the work. Yeah, so this isn't Christian ministry or historical Christianity that we're talking about. This is the gospel as restored through the prophet Joseph Smith. Yeah. That those have to be the pins. Mm -hmm. It has to be the, uh, the Mormon missionary. And, and, and I think that's an important observation too because sometimes we, we want to think, well, with mass communication, uh, we can uh, get the gospel out. You know, it's as if we could fly a plane over a country and throw out a pamphlet. And, and, and that isn't the idea at all. Uh, it's missionaries that have to go to these people. Stand you know, on the soil. Stand on the soil and put their arms around the people and love them and kneel with them and baptize them. It's, uh, it's tough to get baptized by yeah. a radio. Or... And, and I heard your father <laughs> years ago say to a group of people, it's more even than just baptizing them, too. That is, the promise in Revelation is that there will be kings and priests in every land prior to the coming of the Savior, which means we must have the blessings of well, the temple you, available to us. See, what he, he used the scriptural chain of thought, and what he did is he started with uh, Revelation chapter 14. He said, now, here's the prophecy that the restored gospel goes to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Then he turned to section 90, verse 11, where it says that uh, every nation, kindred, tongue, and people will hear the uh, gospel in their own language. Then he turned to uh, Alma 29, where it talks, verse 8, where it talks about the fact that they would be taught by uh, their own people. Then he uh, turned to First uh, Nephi chapter 12, where it talks about uh, congregations of the saints upon all the face of the whole earth. Then finally to uh, Revelation chapter 5, where it talks about kings and priests. And so uh, what we're talking about is every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, congregations of the saints presided over by their own people, sending out their own sons and daughters as missionaries, and standing in the leadership positions are people who have received the fullness of temple blessings. Which Joseph Smith also taught that the whole purpose of the gathering, the gathering. Is, is so that you have enough people gathered to Christ in an area where temples can be constructed and he can teach them what he wants to teach them. Well, as you've been talking, my mind goes back to Abraham chapter 2, to the foundations of it all, the Abrahamic covenant, where Abraham has promised that his posterity will be uh, ministers and messengers of the covenant, and that, that covenant will be fulfilled. So we almost come full circle back to the Pearl of Great Prize, to the book of Abraham, to see the fulfillment, to see the, the original prophecy, and then the fulfillment of these things. Well, and, then, and to show you that we still have a ways to go, you, you may recall one of our colleagues made a presentation to us a week ago and explained that at this day, 0.17% of the world's population is LDS. So there's still a little bit of work yet to do. Yeah. Oh, well, the, whole, they, the whole world doesn't have to accept the gospel. Nor, nor am I convinced, of course, that everybody personally has to hear it in this life before the Savior comes. Mm -hmm. But more than 20% surely would have heard of 
Mormonism or the Church of Jesus Christ. This is not 20%, this is 0.17%. Yes, but, but the, the staggering figures are those that haven't even heard of the yeah. church. Yeah, you're right. They don't yeah, even know the name so, of the church. I just met a woman from Los Angeles who just joined the church 13 years ago, and prior to that, living in, Los, living in the United States all of her life, had never heard yeah. of the name of the church. Yeah.